What's up everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six, I'm Rob. Today I'm doing McAllen Classic Cut. Alright, that's the bottle. This pretty red box over here is the packaging it comes in. This is a pretty much cast strength. I guess it's cast strength. It doesn't say cast strength on the box or the bottle, but it's 58.4%, so we can assume that it's cast strength. The old cast strength, which I have a sample of here, the one that preceded this 2017 Classic Cut Edition, um, was 58.2%. So the, the Classic Cut is actually higher in ABV, so we can assume that it's a cast strength as well. These are limited, so before I even start this review, I'm gonna tell you guys, go out there and buy a whole bunch. I already backed this one up with another two, and I plan to get as many more as I can because it's delicious stuff, and I would like to have one open at all times. Um, I'm gonna taste both, neat, and then add some water to them, taste them again, and kind of just, I'm gonna mark the classic cut. I've done a review already on the cast strength, but I don't think I gave it a mark. This will be my second time trying it. Third technically because uh, the first time I had two drams of it. This one is a little smaller. It's probably one dram, courtesy of um, Jeremy from Toronto Whiskey Society. You can check out his blogs um, on the website. But without further ado, on the nose. So exclusive aging in a cask seasoned with Oloroso Sherry. And from everything I've read and heard, McAllen allows the Oloroso Sherry that they put in their barrels to evaporate in the barrel. So they store the sherry in their cooperage at, um, in Jerez, Spain, and then when the Sherry completely evaporates, they ship those barrels out to Scotland and McCallan takes them and pours their new make inside and this is the result. A nice beautiful natural color. These ones are both unchill filtered. As you can tell, there is a slight difference in color. I'm not sure if you can see it from there, but the classic cut is definitely lighter than the cast strength, all right? <clears throat> so, there's beautiful fruits. Um, blood orange, for sure. It has the classic McAllen smell to it, which I love. Um, I described it as the 12 year old on steroids. Although it's probably a bit younger, it's probably a mix of whiskeys between 8 and 12 years old as opposed to uh, just a whole bunch of whiskey from um, or that's 8 years old beautiful nose there's red fruits in there so fruity I love it. There's a little bit of a licorice smell to it too, which actually is magnified when you add water. I'll talk about that in a sec. This is the cast strength. Okay, so on the nose alone, I feel that water would be useful for the cast strength to open it up a little bit. But you're into more of like a darker chocolate kind of smell. Less on the fruit. I wonder if water will do anything to that, but we'll find out in a sec. I'm gonna taste this neat real quick.
beautiful traditional Macallan taste. And I know a lot of people are saying that the Macallans of new are not as good as the Macallans of old. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I, I do have the luxury of tasting this one right here, but for the most part, I've never tasted a Macallan um, earlier than like something produced in 1996. So I couldn't really compare to anything dating before that. But for me, Macallan is amazing. I've had a lot of whiskey in my time, uh, just not alone on this channel, but before that as well. And there's a big reason why I keep going back to it. Definitely heavy on the fruits with the classic cut. It's a beautiful whiskey. Okay, so on the palate, the cast strength is a bit smoother at the same pretty much ABV. I like the nose wins on the classic cut for sure, but on the palate, I give the slight edge to the, the cast strength. Um, the nose is a lot more dampened but the palate is just very creamy, it's rich. I actually wanna do that one more time just cause I wanna make this fair. Cause what tends to happen is you try one first and that kinda allows your palate to acclimate and then you try the other and it tastes a little bit better because your mouth is already conditioned to the high ABV. So we're gonna do that one more time neat and then I'll Move on, move on to the uh, adding water. Mm -hmm. And just as I suspected, that creaminess comes in more. My palate's already acclimated to the high ABV now, and I'm able to enjoy it so much more, pick out all those beautiful chocolate notes and some licorice notes, but not quite black licorice at this point. Honestly, that's awesome neat. A lot of red fruit. Way more fruity than the than the cast strength. I think the cast strength leans heavily towards a chocolate flavor. One more taste of neat and then I'll add a little bit of water. So this cast strength reminds me a little bit of uh, the Glendronic single casks, which means there's probably richer sherry casks used for it, but that's not necessarily a great thing. Um, I know people love that and there are people that are really looking for that sherry bomb, but I find that this is a little bit more balanced, the classic cut, initially. That's my first reaction. I kind of suspected that already, but I'm definitely getting that note. The, um, the cast strength is extremely robust, whereas the classic cut, despite being a high ABV, is more of an everydayer, in my opinion, so far. Let's see what happens with water. And add a drop each. A little less to this one because there's a little less in the glass. <clears throat> All right. Let's see if anything changes. First on the nose. It's a lot more buttery notes on the nose. Pick out like almost a milk chocolatey note. Some caramel as well. Butterscotch. On the palate.
with a touch of water, honestly, you never have to buy another whiskey again. That's how good this one is. Honestly, it's really good in my opinion, the classic cut. I'm a little bit obsessed with it, I'm not gonna lie. Um, as you can tell, I recently traded for it and I think I've only given one sample away of it so far and that's pretty much all me. Um, really enjoying this one. So with a little water here, So a drop of water, not much changes. It's still very chocolatey. Um, I'm not getting a ton of fruit with the cast strength, but it's a beautiful whiskey. Um, this is going for, on the secondary market, anywhere from 300 to $500, depending on uh, how lucky you get. And I'm not sure I would ever pay secondary prices on a whiskey, especially, um, one that I feel like I can get in another bottle, but that's really nice stuff. So if you do have a bottle of it, be proud because it's, it's beautiful stuff. I'm gonna stop talking about the cast strength for a second here because this review is not about the cast strength. It's really good, really, really good. I'm not gonna mark it though. I'm gonna move on to marking the classic cut. Just one more sip of water. Nose is beautiful, lots of fruit, a mix of berries and dark fruit, some orange as well. Definitely some chocolate and butterscotch in there as well. All right. Viscosity is awesome on it. It's, it's pleasantly sweet. Orange, chocolate, and dark fruits. Okay, um, this is definitely an A plus for me. I just don't know how high I'm gonna bring that just yet. It's, it's up there. It's, for me, close to a 93, 94. I don't, this is where it gets a little cloudy for me because I'm not sure how much better it can be. What happens is younger whiskey tends to be a bit sweeter. As it gets older, it smoothens out. Um, a lot of those sharp alcohol notes um, go away and that brings in dry smoothness. But the issue is the spiciness from the cask starts to overpower the whiskey. So the older it gets, the more likely it's gonna be spicy. And I find that the 12 to 18 year range for scotch is my wheelhouse. Um, really, I, I just prefer whiskey in that age group. I find a little bit older than that and it starts to get a little too oaked. Um, younger than that, it tends to be a little too heavy on the alcohol burn. But, this one is definitely a mix of some younger and older whiskey and I, I, I wouldn't change much. I don't think there's much I would change. I'm gonna try it one more time. So, I think I'm leaning, when it comes to Sherry, I'm, I'm leaning towards Oloroso as opposed to um, Pedro Jimenez. Um, I find it's more my wheelhouse again. The, the tasting notes on the back here are caramel, orange zest, nutmeg spice. I definitely pick up all those things. This is the first time I'm reading this. Um, and then it says the aroma is some vanilla. I guess that's where that buttery note is coming through. This is really good stuff. Honestly, I'm giving this an A+. It's give or take um, maybe two. So I would go as high as maybe a 95, 
ish, but I, I'd be hesitant to go any higher than 93, to be honest with you. Um, but definitely, definitely, definitely one of the better whiskeys I've tried this year. Um, for that reason alone, expect to see it again soon. That's a little bit of a spoiler, but hoard it, guys. Pick as many bottles of this up as you can. I don't know how many they produced. Uh, there's no indication as to how many bottles and how limited this is. I know that it's a global release. Ontario's getting it very soon. Um, from everything I've heard, it's in the new year. The United States pretty much has it everywhere, and the prices vary from 90 to 110 US dollars. I was lucky enough to pick up four at $70 American. Um, so I was pretty psyched about that. Town Liquor in Florida, um, really, really cool people. I bought a whole bunch and had them sent to my brother's in-laws house who lives in Florida. And then when they come back from vacation, they will legally bring those over to me. Um, but really, really nice stuff. Honestly, like I said, pick up as many as you can. It's gonna probably be between 150 and 180 dollars Canadian in Ontario. You'll probably be able to pick it up for a little bit less than that in Alberta and the other provinces. Um, but I would definitely pay. I probably will end up paying 150 to 180 dollars for another bottle just to have a few always on hand because um, I think it's that good. I really do. All right. As you can see in the background here, uh, the desk is getting very full. I've been lucky to pick up quite a few really cool items. This one is super rare. I'm, I had an opportunity to try it last night. Really, really good stuff. Kentucky Owl, 11-year-old um, rye. I also picked up a Hibiki 17-year-old and a High West Mid-Winter Nights Dram. Um, those will be coming over in the new year, all right? There are American purchases, but a friend of mine that lives in the US is bringing them over over the holidays. And I also picked up this Hazelburn Barolo nine-year-old, which I'm super excited to try. Coming up soon, I'll be doing the Lefroy Select. I'll be doing Hopefully if I can get it in time before the new year the McAllen edition number three and then I'll probably throw in a couple of Other reviews I would like to review this darker side of the moonshine and tell you a little bit more about what my involvement with Last straw distillery is gonna be in the next few years uh, I think it's gonna be a really cool project and I think you guys would be interested to find out so stay tuned for that um, until then, you guys can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and most importantly, if you get an opportunity, make yourself an account on Snups and join the Whiskey in the Six group because we're having a great time on there. We're sharing a lot of whiskey. We're able to communicate and find different ways to help each other out. So join us because it's a lot of fun. Cheers.